coming to Iceland requires kind of special people to, to move to Iceland. Many people end up here that have some interesting stories or backgrounds. Yeah, we started in, so in Barcelona. We put all our things in the car. We knew we were not taking like the easy route, you know, leaving everything, our connections, our family and resources in Spain and going somewhere else and see what happens. It was so difficult to start in Iceland. That's Julia's solution to any problem. We should just get a cat. Samir. Julia is a dog lover. For small dogs, she often makes them feel helpless. Not get close to the tower, but, it, but now you should kill this guy. She works in a company, but she is a very typical person. Today is her husband Rafa's first year in Bingdao. It is the first year of the first year of the building. Oh, that's right. They are still my friends in real life. This episode of the documentary shows the whole story. 除了全程跟拍了他们在一月冰岛搬家全过程，同时在 Blank Me 的支持下，回顾了这些年他们的经历，从巴塞罗那一路开车到冰岛，从此住下，一定能听到很多精彩的故事。One year before we were finishing the degree, we took a map, and then we started thinking. Where we want to live, we had nothing. You know, you could just carve your own life and, and decide what. There was this moment when we thought, "An Iceland? Why not Iceland?" We always wanted to go, and if we move there, it's only one trip, <laughs> and then we can spend all the time we want. Once we decided we wanted to go to Iceland, we we had a plan, and, and we started saving all the money we could, and we took every job we we could get. And... that we're gonna be in, in just one year. We can choose where to put things and they will be just there, you know, for a long time. That should be really nice. I'm super excited. We're watching all these pictures of Iceland and trying to think what it's like, and then all of them were sunny and with waterfalls, so we thought, you know, standards. It's still a big We started in, so in Barcelona. We put all the trash bags with yeah. clothes. Basically t-shirts and, and shorts and... The sandals. I think it's still in bags. And we kept driving to Denmark and then we put the cat on, on a ferry that takes mm -hmm. three days and it gets you to the east of Iceland. Not what we expected, like we had everything planned and we had a map and lots of red dots in the map and every red dot was a, we thought a town, but <laughs> was, was actually a, a gas station. Yeah, and, like one uh, farm. <laughs> And you arrive and everything was much smaller than we thought and, and also more, more uh, rural. Like the road was not paved in all the areas and even though it was July, it was snow in the yeah. parts of the road there as well. There was snow, a lot of snow. We, we were so happy to finally be in Iceland and we had no idea what we were doing. We probably spent an hour on the waterfall. 100 meters more, there was another waterfall, it was bigger. We stopped again and we took very similar pictures and we realized, you know, there were actually waterfalls everywhere. At some point we just didn't stop anymore. We just continued driving and... Yeah, we had to get to Reykjavik at some point. I'm super excited. I don't care about being tired. I just want to move. I don't think I believe it that, you know, we're gonna live in our own apartment in Iceland so, and move in January. <laughs> it's crazy. It was so complicated to, you know, from the beginning to find a place and to, you know, get the financing and do all the things. Only one of the beds? Only one, yeah. Uh, about the middle one. And there's a little step. Yeah. After seeing so many small towns, Reykjavik yeah. looked super big. Yeah, it felt like a big city. And then we got to the Reykjavik campsite and mm -hmm. we put up the tent. And, and that was our home. So when, when you apply for your documents here in Iceland, we put the camping address. Mm -hmm. 
and it was so hot during the day because it was bright orange. It basically made it just like a small oven, you felt like a pizza. And then at night it was the opposite, it was super, super cold. You know, there was this moment at like 11 o'clock, I think, when the sun went down, that suddenly it got super freezing. So you could never really be okay inside. It was either like super hot or super cold. We didn't want to spend all our, like our little savings that we had in a hotel because those were very expensive. So we wanted to just find a long-term rental. It was really, really hard. There were so few uh, for rent in Iceland. And then when we found one, uh, it didn't have furniture. And everything took a long, long time. You ordered the bed in Ikea. They had to ship it from, I don't know where, from Sweden, I guess. After a month in the campsite, we had a, a, a house, but then it was empty. And we had to wait one month mm. for the bed. So even, <laughs> even though it was not a tent anymore, we were still in the sleeping bags. And yeah, on the floor. Yeah. And it was less cozy, you know, because the, the grass was actually nice, but then, you know, the campsite, but then the floor was yeah. so hard. <laughs> so I just wanted to go back to the campsite. Welcome home. <laughs> we work really hard. It was so difficult to start in Iceland. I went to the interviews, but it looked like they didn't think that I was going to stay in Iceland. They thought that it was just some fun. They were more curious about me and about why I was coming to Iceland than trying to figure out if I was going to be good at, you know, for that job. So I never managed to get any job, like anything that I liked. So we were doing a little bit of you know, working in something that it was fun, but it was not uh, what we were looking for. I was working in a hotel at the time, in like breakfast. I worked at the restaurant for one year and then I was basically at the university during the day and then at five I started my shift. He would come at 12 at night, then he would go and take a shower and then he started writing his projects. And then he would, no, 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 I drive you, I drive you. But yeah, that year life was perfect. We were really happy that we were in Iceland and that we could do something. I met someone, they were just starting a project. They needed someone to help with coding the website. I wasn't like a, you know, getting paid or a real employee or anything. I just wanted to do something a bit creative. A year after being in Iceland, Julia had worked for free enough hours to find like a, a good job. And then when I graduated here, then it was much easier to find a job within my field. I think we're gonna start bringing things here from downstairs. I'm excited to have books again. <laughs> we were always afraid of buying books. <laughs> you know, that's the worst thing to carry in suitcases and stuff. So now we can buy books again. <laughs> this is my exercise. Only hundred, so we well, can forget about her. We'll probably, you know, comfort her later. Maybe. <laughs> when we miss her. There was a moment when uh, we had almost been a month in the campsite and I just didn't see us being in an apartment close. Uh, I thought that was not going to happen. So I said, what are we going to do? We've been one month here and we're not going to make it. <laughs> We're gonna have to just go back, and uh, I didn't want to go back to Spain at all. We knew we were not taking like the easy route, you know, leaving everything, our connections, our family and resources in Spain and going somewhere else and see what happens. I think f for me it was not about finding an apartment, but it was when I had been working in a restaurant for six months or seven months, I was like, you know, I really enjoy this, but I don't want to do this forever. Julia's solution to any problem, we should just get a cat. If Julia feels a bit sad, Rafa, we should get a cat. You know, that, that will make me feel much better. So when we got an apartment, we went to get a cat and it became one more problem. <laughs> of course, when we were students in Spain with all our plans to move, that was never on the table. But then when we came to Iceland here and it looked like we were working and, you know, we're staying. She's seen our best and our worst in that sense. 
it's been good company to to have and you know you can have a terrible day at work but then the cat is there at home to remind you she had an even worse day than you and <laughs> you, you better feed her some snacks and play with her and no she's really nice and the first night our plan was to not let her in the bedroom as soon as we closed the the door and we went to bed she started just meowing and crying. Yeah. Julia's heart was breaking inside the room and the cat was crying. Oh, it so was you? You you just went and saved it her? It was one of us and, and we <laughs> opened the door and we got we let the cat in. Uh, super quickly, she was just in the middle of the bed and we were uh, one on each side, just in a little space. Yeah, until today. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, you? You could just, you know, I hope. <laughs> Not the other door. Oh, there's a floor. Fish. Yeah. Fish. 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 My father was telling me, why not Toulouse in France? <laughs> it was closer. <laughs> but Julie was so sad when we left though, for the first. It was difficult. They see as well. I think they're really happy. And they've also been here in Iceland and they like Iceland a lot now. It's very different from Iceland. A bad winter is like 10 degrees. Yeah, and they complain a lot. Oh, it was so cold, 10 degrees. Every time that we went for a walk, they had to put on so many clothes, like the scarf and the, you know, the hat and the, the gloves and all the different layers of jackets. And they're not used to it. Like for all we know, it's the first time they've seen a glove and they're like... Yeah. And maybe when we were students, we didn't have so much time for anything. So we would see them a lot, but you know, we didn't have quality time with them so much. Now we have like twice a week, we have one or two hours that we spend talking to them. You know, so it's quality time because we're just not doing anything else with talking. We have uh, the apartment with two proper bedrooms. Mm. Finally, I think they can maybe come a bit and... Hello. 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 Hi. Are you angry? Are you okay? Do you want to go home? You know that this is not home anymore. Hmm? You want to go where all your toys are? Huh? Ameta. so curious, you know, even if she's angry, she want to know what's going on. Welcome, family! Are you okay? Yes, I am. Oh, you like the new apartment? Yes. I love it. <laughs> it does feel different when cleaning your own thing, you know, your house for the first time. I'm cleaning this window and it's my window. <laughs> After <laughs> love well, Good job. Exactly. <laughs> we did great in two weeks. I like the views and the light. There's a lot of light and I didn't expect that. It has nice views to the ocean. Every day is different. Like, you know, anytime I just pass there, I, I watch the views and the, the sky and the ocean, they look very different. The floor. The floor. I remember just moving wood from one side to the other. Everything was just, this is a disaster. You cannot live in this building. The floors are just 
a mess, their mountains, and there's no floor that you can put here. And then the other company called, ah, now we can come. And they actually came, and he was, yeah, well, we know, yeah, we've been doing this for three apartments already, so it's difficult, but it can be solved. Not sure, it's not getting in here. No. And everything was so complicated and we had a lot of time before we had to move. But they just started basically a week before we, we had to move. <laughs> so we gave them the keys to, so that they could come in and work and they lost it on the first week. And everything was a bit like that. And yeah, I think we are two years or three from looking like a proper apartment. It's <laughs> for two people and then there are two beds here together table or something here. Bookshelf on this side. Yes. We feel we spent like hundreds of hours thinking of the perfect sofa. So we <laughs> want to have just a sofa that is perfect for this apartment and yes. it was long long nights for Julia and sometimes for Rafa as well. But uh, in the end we, we got a sofa. We're just so tired. I don't want to think about sofas or chairs for a long long yeah. while. It's kind of difficult to imagine things also because uh, in Iceland you buy the sofa but you have never seen the sofa. Mm. We don't so, even know if it's comfortable or not. Yeah, we don't know if the backrest will work. Yeah. Like that crazy like, for, idea. For all we know, it could be a potato. It's, yeah. it's just like. But there's yeah. no way to try it. And we can, you know, either you buy the one that they have in the store, which is like very, very little selection, mm. or, you know, if you want something a bit specific, like we want it for the two sides, the conversation area and the other one, then we have to, you know, just buy, buy it online and hope it works. Yeah. and wait for months until you get it. I feel like there is only one boat going from Iceland to the world. And that boat is always full and you know, you gotta wait for a space in the boat. It's this hole here. So you can... You hear? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. We sometimes thought about going somewhere warmer. Every winter we think of that. Come January we're like, yeah, we should move. Yeah, that's the hardest part. It's just constantly like minus three or minus five and always, you know, like kind of clouds and everything icy or wet and it's just never enjoyable to be outside. They said that when they went to the hospital, they went to the hospital, they didn't buy food. 都是这些年，随着冰岛旅游变火，才渐渐多了选择。我问他们，每次想离开冰岛，究竟是什么原因让他们留下？他们说了一段有趣的经历。We were traveling on that day. I went to work. Then I had to come back home super quickly because then Rafa had to come pick me up and then we would go to the airport. I was taking the bus to come back home, and then I went home and I couldn't open the door. I said, What? Where are my keys? Where is my phone? Can I get a call from the neighbor? And it's Julia. Like, <laughs> so like, it's a call from a strange family and it's Julia and it's like, Hi Rafa, by the way, I know we're flying in an hour and a half and I know we're all in a big hurry, but I forgot everything on the bus. I'm with a neighbor, he made me a cup of tea, it's your problem now. You go fix it. I couldn't do anything, I will fix it and then we, hopefully we make the plane and if not... You know. In bus 14, so he could track the bus as well. Mm -hmm. So we were checking which of the all the 14 buses in the app was more or less at the same spot as my phone in the other you know in the other app and we mm. saw the move so we knew it was in the bus we went and then then we went to chase the bus and i just got in and asked ah, have you found the phone yes here mm. <laughs> so i landed we gotta do that more often yeah but right. in the end the neighbor took a very good care of julia and we still have the cup of tea that she gave her yeah, you know you luck. can Give it back when you want. I think they moved out, and mm. and we moved out also. Yeah. And I have like life happened, too. and we never returned either the cup or the favor. So. But every time I see the mug, I think, oh, neighbors yeah. are nice. So yeah. now we have to do a favor to someone. They are like naive, or or to, to some extent here, but it, it's so refreshing. Sometimes we go shopping here to a store and, and if they don't have anything they'll say wait 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 maybe our competitor has it we'll give them a call and also people that we meet here like our friends. Coming to Iceland requires 
kind of special people to, to move to Iceland. It's a bit difficult because it's, it's almost the North Pole, it's cold, it's very small. Many people end up here that have some interesting stories or backgrounds or yeah. like they're all looking for an adventure and they're very open and, and from different countries. And... 2018年6月28日,他们大学毕业的第二天,从巴塞罗那出发,开着车换轮渡,7月10日到达雷克亚威克。2011年1月,经过了在冰岛奋斗的这些年,买到人生第一套房。他们的猫名叫哈姆莱